Well, hello again. Welcome to uh, Topics of Light, where we bring stories of encouragement in the Word of God uh, to help. And I know for me, I get a lot of help just from these uh, discussions myself personally. And today I have with me Amber. Hello. Amber is uh, such a beautiful woman of God, and it's a blessing to be here with you today to talk about this. So today our topic is, we've already talked about, when we talk about what we want people to know about Jesus, his commitment, how committed he is, his unselfishness, how unselfish he is, and now I want to talk today about his perfection and um, how he prays perfectly. For us that's the one topic we're going to look at today so i am so uh, blessed by the fact that jesus sits at the right hand of god the father ever making intercession and praying i don't know about you amber but i am so blessed to know he's praying for me yes how about well, you and he never sleeps so he's yeah. always praying like 24 like, 7. yeah that's yeah. amazing and he perfectly knows how to pray for us, mm -hmm. right? He perfectly knows how to pray for us with a complete knowing of who we are, where we are, what we need. And he's, it comes from a heart of devotion. You know, many people don't know, but he is in his resurrected body mm -hmm. at the right hand of God the Father. In his resurrected body that shows the nail holes in his hands and his feet shows the stripes upon his back in that body he shows what he sacrificed for us and now the high priest of our I mean he's praying for us so it's not like he went to the cross and he was raised from the dead and if that wasn't enough now he's praying and there's comfort in that when people think yes. I'm all alone who knows what I'm going through? I wish I had somebody who could pray for me right now. Well, you do. His name is Jesus, and he is 24-7, like you said, praying all the time. Yet he tells us, even though he knows, he still tells us in his word to ask him and tell him what we need. Isn't that a blessing? Even yeah. though he knows everything, why do you think he wants us to ask him? Well, he's not going to tell us no I mean unless it's outside of his will or something that's not according to the word but he wants us to come to him and to depend on him for everything mm -hmm. you know he doesn't want us to go you know depending on everything else he wants us to come to him and mm -hmm. it's true it says he already knows what we need or want but he does want us to ask and mm -hmm. still come to him he wants that relationship oh well, that's so key so really it's all about relationship then, isn't it? So it's A, we trust him enough, because you don't ask somebody for something you don't trust that could give it to you, right? And so we, we have that fellowship with him. The more we ask and trust him and commune with him, the closer and more intimate we get with him. And that is that beautiful process that I think is more important than what I receive. Right? The fact that we receive answers to our prayer is awesome, but the relationship that's built, that intimacy, I think, is, is so good that that's something that's a byproduct you don't even think about. And then you realize you hear him in, in the way he speaks to you. Not so much an audible voice, but like you had mentioned last time, by your peace and the word of God and confirming and then go here, don't go there, hold, wait. Um, I was laughing the other day, I, I called up Pastor John. Um, many of you know and some of you don't know, but I'm married to a wonderful man. Um, Pastor John is his, his title name. But I was coming home and I decided I was gonna sing to him. He's such a, a accomplished musician and he sings so beautifully and I love when he sings to me. But I thought I'd sing to him. And you know what I chose? What? He'll be coming around, she'll be coming around the mountain when she comes, Amber. Isn't that about as goofy as you can think? So I, I decide I'm gonna sing to him. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. And I sang three little bars of that. And he's kind of quiet on the other end of the line, right? 
<laughs> and he's thinking, oh no, she's coming home. I wonder what condition she's coming home in. But what was so cool about that is the Lord used that. I was just having fun, right? I'm coming home. It's been a mountain, but I'm coming around and I'm coming home, you know, because sometimes we deal with mountain situations, right? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the Lord so sweetly showed me the next day that there's another phrase to that song that says, Woe back. And it was like, Woe back, D. There's there times is. you gotta whoa we'll back. Yes, yeah. she'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be riding three red horses when she comes. Whoa we'll uh. back, right? And so sometimes we get on this automatic pilot that we don't whoa we'll back and stop and seek him and inquire of him and pray, especially in things we've done a lot, right? It's routine. Mm -hmm. We don't always include him in those areas. And I think it's so important. So you reminded me, my, my funny song to Pastor John, he reminded me through that, that there, it's time to seek him. It's time to inquire of him. Yeah, for, yeah. Well, for every decision. Yes. Because for me, I don't like making decisions anyways. But the Holy Spirit helps me. You know, if, if I ask him, you know, okay, I'm, in a, I'm at a fork in my life. What do I do? Do I do this or do I do this? You know, and then, you know, I step out. And then if, if I don't have keys to do it or I have keys to stay here, you know, then I'm like, oh, okay, this is what I do. But, mm -hmm. you know, we're not to not step out. We're supposed to still, you know, do what we know to do. But, yeah. of course, I mean, every decision I ask him because I'm like, only he knows what to do. He knows the end from the beginning. And right. he knows, you know, even things that are going to come up as a surprise to us. But for him... You know, I remember this in one of our classes at Rama. The teacher said he's not on the throne like this. You know, like the home alone face. Like, <laughs> what do I do? You know, we we feel like that, but he's right. he's there. Like, I, I knew that was gonna happen. I gotcha. Mm. You know, and um, that's so. Good. And he can prepare us, you know, to handle those situations. But we have to, you know, take that time with him mm. too. You know, that's instead good. of because sometimes I get like that where. You know, you feel like you have to hurry up and make a decision or, you know, someone's putting pressure on you and you're trying to handle it and you're like, okay, you know, and I've noticed it when I just give in to that, you know, that pressure, then I miss it. And then I'm like, Lord, I'm sorry, you know, right. and he's so merciful, yeah. but it's just, it's a blessing to walk with him and to learn and to commune with him so we can know how to handle what we yeah. need to handle. And not run ahead. And yeah. just, you know, just take a step back and just pause and go, no, I got to seek the Lord on this. I got to check this. Or you just continually, right? We're always yeah. continually checking with him. Look, let's look in the Bible at Matthew in uh, chapter 12. Uh, Matthew chapter 12. There's such a good scripture. There, the Bible is full of good scripture. But in Matthew 12, I want to talk a little bit about uh, verse 28 through 30. Um, the Bible says in Matthew 12, 28 through 30, Come here to me, all who are growing weary, to the point of exhaustion. Isn't that something? And who have been loaded with burdens and are bending beneath your labor. And take away your burdens and thus refresh you with rest. That's what he does. Yeah, he doesn't does. Doesn't it? Yeah, because the cares of this world, the things going on, the darkness that we see, it gets heavy. Mm -hmm. And it gets, it gets overwhelming, you know, but when you take that time with him and, and pray about it, and sometimes I just picture myself handing him everything that I'm concerned about, I'm like, here, I can't handle this, but that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to do what you tell me to do. So I just, I picture myself handing it to him, and then it's just like it falls off, yeah. you know, and then you, you're, you feel, like you said, that his yoke is easy and his burden is light so then you're like okay now I can carry on you know and that's so good because then he goes on to say in the scripture take it once my yoke upon you and learn from me because I am meek and lowly in heart and you will find cessation from labor and refreshment for your souls for my yoke is mild and pleasant and my load is light in weight I liked it, uh, and I saw this one time in a picture that um, 
and I heard it and I saw it, was it's like Jesus is right there. You know the yoke of oxen they talked about being yeah, yoked? Being yoked yeah, being yoked. Yeah. You've got two oxen and they're pulling a cart, a heavy load behind them, and you've got two oxen. Well, it's like Jesus is on one side. He's the master. He knows exactly how to carry the load. Look what he did for us at the cross. He's the master of carrying the load. And then we get to be yoked right with him and he shows us how to carry it. He also shows us how to respond to people as we're carrying the load. Yeah, right? because pressures, all kinds of pressures can make us squeezed. Mm -hmm. And when we're not filled with the word, with, with the Holy Spirit, other stuff will come out. So that's why we have to guard our hearts and guard our bodies, guard our minds because you know, um, it's easy to be to be squeezed and the wrong thing come out. Mm -hmm. You know, but if we're filled with Him and saturated, then um, the Word will come out or will react how He reacts. Right, which even is more of a witness because there's a heavy load we're we're carrying, but in that heavy load, yeah, they see something different. They see peace. They don't see the pressure. With the joy. I have joy a lot, like in the midst of yeah. like really squeezing. I, the Holy Spirit just gives me joy and I start laughing and people are like, what, what are you doing? Or That's annoying. I'm like, okay, well, that's how I handle it. Yeah, that's good. So the Holy Spirit gives me joy. Yeah. <laughs> Which I think is lovely because it's catchy, right? <laughs> So if you're looking at the purpose of Jesus interceding for us, because you know he prays perfect for us, so the purpose of Jesus interceding for us is that he knows exactly what to do. He's the burden remover, you know, through the Holy Spirit, his presence in the world via the Holy Spirit, which is the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. Mm -hmm. And so when, he, when we're hooked up with him, these things are being uh, lessened and lightened and so forth. But this is an interesting question I want to ask you. If Jesus was God, how could he pray to God? Well, he was the son of God and he, he is God. Jesus is Lord. Um, he would speak to the Heavenly Father continually. So that's how he prayed you know to him he got instruction he got refreshing he you know he had to deal with with what we go through and even more and he would always commune with the heavenly father so that's how he would be able to pray and know what to do and have wisdom yeah. and we can learn from that can't we yeah he would tell people i only do what i see my father do Sometimes people say, what should we do? How should I do this? What should we do? Well, let's pray about it. Let's ask him, right? Well, what do you think I should do? Well, I think we should pray about it. Let's ask him. Why? Because we're yoking up with him. Yeah. We're, we're yielding to him. So do you think, Amber, also does Jesus pick and choose which of his children he'll pray for based on their performance? Like, if you performed well, <laughs> Um, right? How, no. You know, many people believe that. Yeah, some they? people, they're in this competitive thing, and it's sad because, you know, you see them, like, cutting each other down instead of building each other up. That's in the Lord. And so, no, he never looks to see who's better than who. I mean, in fact, he's, he's interceding for all the people in the world, mm -hmm. even the lost. He's interceding for people that are baby Christians. He's interceding for everyone and that's what makes me laugh when someone's like oh i'm jealous of so and so because of this and i'm like hold on we have the same heavenly father why don't you just ask him for what they have and not be jealous because you know he he's not like um there's no like favoritism he's not like i love i love you more than i love you right. you know he's he loves all of his children he died for all of us and God created us. He's our Father. He created every person in the world to be who they are at birth. Either you were born a boy or a girl. Um, not to be confused. And um, but He doesn't have favoritism. You know, He loves us the same. So 
we should be building each other up and working with each other instead of saying, I'm going to try to be better than you. I mean, competition can knock people down. Right. And it, it, it's a challenge. And that's not what God wants us to do. He wants us to live in unity and harmony. And when, the, when people outside of the kingdom of God or outside of the body of Christ see that among the people in Christ, they go, well, that's not right. They yeah. know that's not right. Yeah. They just know that's not right. So, my friend, Jesus shows us that he loves us. He loves each and every one of us. He does respect faith, but he's no respecter of persons. But he does respect faith in him. Mm -hmm. And so today, um, I would just encourage you to go to him, to seek him, to uh, ask him for, your, for help. He hears you. He wants to be there in your life, and he wants to help you. So um, Jesus prays perfectly. Hook up with him. It'll be your life will be so much better. My life is so much better. Yes, mine too. <laughs> so until <laughs> next time, this is Amber and Denise saying thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you soon.